Good day, JPIC animators. Uh, welcome to our 10th video. We are now in our 10th video of our uh, video series, which is the Reflections on the Capuchin JPIC Handbook. Now, uh, <clears throat> as you can see, this tree is very healthy. You know, It is taken care of by one of our brothers here at the General Curia, uh, Brother Ignacio Chirina. You know, he, he's the one who, who lovingly takes care of all our plants here in the garden no? and he maintains the garden it's so beautiful to see healthy plants like this one no? uh, the beautiful thing oh i'm so sorry <laughs> i just removed a bark okay uh, why am i here i just would like to share with you <clears throat> uh, this this reflection no? when you look at it the, this tree is supported by a lot of roots and uh, <clears throat> these roots usually interlace with each other and then they go to the deepest parts of the soil in order to support the whole, the whole trunk. No? And it takes the nutrients and makes the trunk very healthy. No? Uh, for me, the reason why I shared this is because I feel that JPIC, the, uh, it reflects the transversality of our JPIC apostolate. Transversality means it, it touches all the aspects of our, of our capuchin charism. Uh, in this Lecture, in this video that we will be having, it says that there are five elements that the Capuchins use in order to live out the gospel life of our Lord Jesus Christ in the spirit of our Father St. Francis. They said that one of these elements is uh, prayer and contemplation. The second, the second one is fraternity. Fraternity, uh, uh, which is not only among the fraternity, the, the whole Capuchin order, but also universal brotherhood which is also uh, brotherhood throughout the to with the rest of creation and the rest of humanity so the second one is fraternity the third one is minority minority and poverty together and then the fourth one is ministry or mission and then the fifth one is what we say jpic now this fifth one actually you will see in all these four aspects no jpic so it's sort of like uh, the the roots no he touches all aspects of this capuchin charism expression of the gospel life no the jpic is uh, as i will say later no is uh, 80 to 90 percent contemplation and only 10 to 20 percent work no the same time all JPIC work is a fraternity work, work of the whole fraternity of the whole order. Uh, minority and and minority and poverty. We always realize that in every moment that we do our JPIC work, it is always it always reminds us that we are just the instrument, and it is God who is all actually doing everything. And finally, uh, there is this ministry. You no, know? all our ministries you cannot separate JPIC because all our ministries are done with the spirit of lifting up the whole of humanity and the whole of creation into their dignity as sons and daughters of our Lord Jesus Christ, of sons and daughters of our Father, uh, God the Father, and at the same time, brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the spirit of JPIC. So when you look at it, somehow it's like the transversality of it. And these roots that interact, all the capuchin charism that we do, is the one that enriches the spiritual life and the spiritual growth of every capuchin brother oftentimes when you go to the peripheries and do mission work do jpic work mission and jpic you cannot separate all these aspects these five elements go into play and when they go into play it enriches the vocation of every friar it is the experiences of working and proclaiming the gospel that gives meaning to are leaving the world in order to be of service to God and to the rest of creation. Uh, they give meaning to our life. We realize we get to understand why we decided not to get married. We get to understand why we decided to live a simpler life. We decided to concentrate on reaching out to the world, reaching out to the whole of humanity. We find meaning when we use these five elements in order to live the gospel life. Well, this introduction is a little bit long now. Let us go to the video where we will be reflecting on this section. So now in our ninth uh, video for, on our reflections on uh, the Capuchin JPIC handbook, 
We are now on page 6, number 2.0, which is part of JPIC as a way of life and mission. And it has uh, more or less about one, two, three paragraphs. Okay. So there are three paragraphs and we will try to reflect on the paragraph. paragraph uh, read one paragraph and then try to reflect on it and we go through and finish that section. Okay. So uh, let's start with the first paragraph. It says here, our Capuchin, our Franciscan Capuchin charism springs from following in the footsteps of Christ. Okay. And our Seraphic Father, St. Francis of Assisi, who lived a gospel way of life. <clears throat> so as Franciscans, our calling is to live the gospel way of life in a radical way which is the spirit of our father, St. Francis. He tried to imitate the life of our Lord Jesus Christ as closely as he could, could possibly sin, uh, as he could possibly do. No, That is why sometimes they say that uh, when you look at the life of St. Francis, it is as if you are reading already the Bible. Because when you look at him, it was really uh, he was really imitating the life of our Lord Jesus Christ as close as he possibly can. And we Capuchins are also called to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ in the spirit of our father, St. Francis. And uh, it was said here that um, following our call, we live and express this charism through five constitutive elements of our Capuchin life. Now, the living out of the gospel life for us Capuchins, uh, there are five elements that you will usually see as the brothers try to imitate the life of our Lord Jesus Christ through the spirit of St. Francis. And these five elements are prayer and contemplation, number one. Number two, fraternity. Number three, minority and poverty. Number four, ministry. And number five, JPIC. If you try to look at it, the number five element is transversal in nature. JPIC is transversal in nature. Okay? Because uh, JPIC tries to lift up the whole of humanity and the whole of creation into their dignity as sons and daughters of God the Father and as brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ and we also because we are also brothers of our Lord Jesus Christ we always when we go to the periphery we always remember that the people that we serve and the creation that we try to conserve are our brothers and sisters and in the process of doing that, to be able to express and do these JPIC values, we need to make JPIC part of the other four elements, which is prayer and contemplation, fraternity, minority, and poverty, and finally, ministry. Okay, so when you look at these four, actually, uh, you cannot do JPIC without prayer and contemplation. Actually, when I would teach my our young brothers in initial formation, I would always tell them, uh, JPIC is 90% or 80% contemplation and only 10 to 20% work or physical action. Okay. Uh, why do I say that? Okay, A very concrete example is, for example, when you go out to the peripheries, and you see the beauty of creation, when you see brilliant sunsets, when you see promising sunrises, when you see the beauty of the night, when you experience the beauty of the night while sleeping in a hammock, you can't help but think of the divine. You can't help but find yourself in prayer and contemplation. At the same time, when you try to respond to the needs of the people, for example, you respond to a calamity, for example, there was an earthquake and you would respond there. And there will be moments when you feel you feel helpless. You cannot help and you cannot do anything. You feel as if, what will I do? How can I be of service to the people who are at this present moment in need of assistance? Immediately, it leads you to prayer. You immediately say, Lord, help me to be of service to these people. Again, it becomes prayer. At the same time, whenever you visit the periphery, oftentimes the people will not say, thank, thank you, thank you so much, the Capuchins are here. No, 
oftentimes what you would encounter when you go to the periphery is the people will say, thanks be to God, help is here. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, when they see people coming to help them, immediately they see the generosity of the Lord. And at the same time, oftentimes when we go to the peripheries, it is the people themselves who remind us how much we are dependent on the Lord. Oftentimes also we make plans on how we are going to do things when we go to the mission or mission work. Now, when you go to the mission work, uh, what happens is oftentimes you have these plans, but when you go there, the Holy Spirit takes the reins and says, this is what you should do. So oftentimes the plans, uh, you let go of the plans and follow, Lord, show me the way and you follow it. When you look at it, most of the time when you do JPIC work, it is 90 to 80 percent prayer and contemplation and only 10 percent JPIC and mission work. Now, when it comes to fraternity life, everything that a JPIC animator does is the work of the fraternity from he, who, where he came from and at the same time it is the work of his circumscription and it is the work of the whole order oftentimes they will not say oh brother so and so is here no they will say oh brother uh, the capuchins are here it's like that it's often like that no and oftentimes when we go to the field even if you are alone or even if you are just two brothers going to the field the brothers who are left behind in the fraternity are also offering their services are also doing the mission why because when you leave the fraternity the responsibilities that you usually you usually hold when you are with the fraternity the brothers in the fraternity takes care of so it means that in order for you to go to the mission the brothers will take your responsibility when you are in the convent they will do it for you so that you will be able to go to the mission just this mere act of the brothers taking charge of the work that you are doing in the friary is already their contribution so that you will be able to serve the people in the peripheries. When the brothers know that you are in the peripheries, oftentimes they pray for you. This is one of the beautiful things that I saw in our novitiate. You know, that when we, if you visit the novitiate, you will see the brothers praying for the brothers who are working in the missions, brothers who are working in the field, brothers who are working in the peripheries. You see here this, this, this fraternity aspect of serving. Also, we encounter, for example, uh, the Capuchin Medical Mission, which, which I had been working with for 11 years. Every time we go to the peripheries, for example, there is a super typhoon and then uh, many people were devastated. And uh, the brothers know that the Capuchin Medical Mission team is already preparing in order to respond to the emergency. Immediately, we would receive calls from our brothers who are working in the parishes, those who are working in the schools, and then they will tell us, oh, we, we have just gathered a lot of, uh, of relief goods. Uh, can we send it to, to the provincial curia? And could you, uh, we would like you to, to share it to the people who are suffering in the field. So what happens is before we go to, to the field, we already have a lot of supplies that we are able to put together. And these are the contributions of the brother to go to the field. Even the brothers who are assigned in the missions outside the country, would send assistance, whether it be financial or everything, because they know that there are a group of brothers who are responding to the calamity. So you see, immediately you appreciate that the mission that the brothers who are working in the field is not just the brothers who are working, but it is the activity of the whole, whole circumscription. At the same time, we also see this, this element of, of the whole order working. You would see sometimes uh, not only within the circumscription, but you also receive help from other circumscription from different parts of the world. Uh, sometimes also when there is a calamity, sometimes even the general curia will be the sort of like the hub from which all the help would come. And from the general curia, it goes to those who are in need. For example, right now we have uh, this, this crisis in Ukraine and, and, uh, and uh, what happens is that all, all the other circumscriptions throughout the world would send assistance to the general courier and the general courier makes sure that all this assistance go to the people who are suffering from the incident, from the crisis that is happening in one country such as Ukraine. So when you see here, the every JPIC work is a 
fraternity work. It is the work of your fraternity, local fraternity. It is the work of your uh, circumscription and it's the work of the whole Capuchin order. Okay. The same time, there is this minority. The minority is you realize that God is the Lord of the mission. No matter how beautiful your plan is, when you get to the mission area, you will always say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then you allow yourself to be guided by the Spirit. And when beautiful things happen, you cannot be you cannot tell that this is my work. No, you realize that this is the Holy Spirit or God working and we are just the instruments. We are just the hands from which the, the Lord uses in order to make a difference in the situation of the people who are excluded from the society and to the, to the environment that is suffering. So you realize you all the good things that is happening in the work that you are doing belongs to God. All the honor and all the glory we offer back to him because we know that it is him who has done all these things and we are just the instruments to do it, to, to accomplish these things. And at the same time also, when it comes to ministry, you, know, you cannot separate JPIC in our ministry. For example, if you go out to the peripheries as a missionary, you cannot just concentrate yourself staying in your convent and just waking up in the morning celebrating the mass giving the sermon and then you go back again to your room in the convent and stay there for the rest of the day no when you are in the mission area what happens is that you also have to attend to the needs of the people you need to consider their their livelihood you also need to consider their social situation you also you need to become a shepherd that smells like the sheep and this is the challenge for us sometimes when when in our modern times oftentimes uh the temptation for for a brother especially those who are in the ministry of of of, of the church ministry is just to celebrate the mass and after you celebrate the mass everything is finished you just go back to your room uh, i call it sort of like a uh, a plastic bubble mentality uh, 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 this is not applicable to all but there is that temptation for us sometimes. For example, uh, I'll just exaggerate a little bit, uh, but you can you can reflect on it and you, you will see the message behind it. For example, imagine a a priest, no, uh, sleeping in a an air conditioned room, and then he will ride in the morning when he wakes up. He will ride an air conditioned car, and then he will travel to whatever church that is going to celebrate mass. As he travels to the church, you know, uh, he stops by a stoplight, a red light, and then a poor person approaches him and knocks on his window. So he brings down the window, gives the poor a few pesos, and then closes the, the door, finish, and then he goes to the chapel, which, uh, which is also air-conditioned. He celebrates the Mass, and after he celebrates the Mass, he rides his air-conditioned car, returns to his air-conditioned room, and then when he turns to the air-conditioned room, he does whatever he wants to do until the next Mass the following day. Now the challenge for us Capuchins is to follow the traditions of the early Capuchins that we have, which is, uh, I remember when I was still in, early, in earlier formation, I find inspiration to our friars who, after they celebrate their Mass, for example, there's one distinct friar that I noticed before, uh, after he celebrates his Mass, he would go to the slum areas and uh, he would ask for people who are not able to go to the church because they are sick. Usually these are the elderly people so that they will be able to receive communion uh, even if they cannot attend the mass. And oftentimes he will also go about asking people who are living together but are not yet married, you know, uh, ask for children who are not yet baptized. So after the celebration of the Mass, he goes to the periphery, his existential peripheries, and he knows the pulse of the people. Uh, these are good examples for us. Uh, and this is our Capuchin tradition. It's like the Capuchins, uh, our questors, who goes to the existential peripheries uh, in order to ask for some assistance from generous benefactors. And most of the things that they are able to gather goes first to the poor and what is left 
these are the ones that the brothers use in their daily needs like for example uh, one good example is our first capuchin saint which is saint felix of cantalice he would go out to the to his existential periphery gather uh, food and most of the food that he had gathered the special ones goes first to the poor and what is left he brings back to the convent for the brothers to eat so these are the things that we can learn from no? uh, jpic is very much part of our ministry because when you reach out to fulfill our ministry our aim always is to lift up those who are excluded from our society to their dignity as sons and daughters of the father and this is part of the jpic is spirituality okay so this is just the first paragraph now to understand the integration of jpic in our charism and constitution it is essential to note that justice peace and integrity of creation are values as well as elements of our spirituality which we have already mentioned no jpic is very transversal it uh, it uh, weaves itself to all aspects of our capuchin charism. JPIC arises from a spirituality centered on God's plan of life for all creation. So the, 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 the plan of God is to bring them back to his loving arms as his children. As his children. And we are invited to collaborate in this divine project. We are invited to take part in this action. Our constitutions noted that as sons, sons of the universal brother, St. Francis, universal brotherhood, which is a Capuchin charism, we work with people throughout the world to establish and strengthen that harmony and further proclaim that the reign of God, the reign of God is to uplift them into their dignity as children of the Father. Thus we become leaven of justice unity and peace this is from the constitution constitution number 14 okay living and preaching the gospel through work of reconciliation peace justice and care for creation cannot be considered merely one activity among our ministries it is instead an essential dimension of our vocation like prayer community minority and mission we have already discussed that no we can we demonstrate the value of JPIC in our communities, parishes, schools, soup kitchens, youth ministries, healthcare, and other services. Uh, I remember in CPO8 they mentioned something that every work that we do, whether it be working in the garden, whether it be giving social service, whether it be celebrating the mass, or whether it be teaching in a school, all these things become like an altar on which we offer our efforts to the Father. Our work becomes the working table or the altar table. Your, our working table, which is the apostolate that we do, becomes the altar on which we constantly offer our love and affection to God, our Father. So um, we demonstrate the values of JPIC in our communities, parishes, schools, soup kitchens, youth ministries, healthcare, and other services. JPIC is therefore a way of life and mission. So it's part of our life and part of our mission work. Actually, in all mission work, in all ministries, you will always see the spirit of JPIC. It is part of our DNA as Franciscans. You cannot separate it from our way of life. Through it, we are challenged by the great issues of humanity and committed to the cause of all people that all might live with dignity okay living from our jpic perspective leads to a personal and communal commitment to the transformation of the unjust society economic political systems which govern our world today we defend the human dignity of each person against every type of oppression injustice violence while analyzing and underlying causes okay uh, we build peace, justice, uh, we build peace. This gift of God and a human task is possible only when we live based on truth and justice and beginning with a change of heart. And then finally, we care for and defend creation, the rights of the earth, and the sustainability of our project. So justice, peace, peace, uh, dialogue with other religions, and integrity of 
creation. Now, I would like to end this reflection by quoting number four in our uh, plenary council of the order, number eight, which is the grace of working. Uh, number four is very nice because it shows us our relationship, this dialogue between God and self and then others and also with creation. So I'll end it with uh, just reading CPO8. It says here, number four, the human person, in order to grow and realize himself, has a vital need of entering into relationship. So we need to develop relationship with ourselves, with God, with others, and with the whole of creation. Authentic work helps human relationships mature in their various dimensions. So these various dimensions are the relationship we have. So work puts us in contact with ourselves, dialogue with ourselves, with our skills and abilities. We get to realize what are the gifts that the Lord gives to us. No, uh, This is why it is important that every brother, as much as is possible, be recognized in his gifts and carries them. All of us, when we enter the Capuchin Order, have a special gift to give. And we need to recognize that because this is what we are going to use to serve humanity and the rest of creation. Number two, work puts us in relationship with the brothers. Okay, fraternity. Okay, therefore, let personal work assigned by the fraternity or taken on in communion with it be an expression of fraternal life and let it become a privileged instrument for the reinforcement of fraternal relationships, generating a true communion within the common life. So every work we do is the work of the fraternity. Number three, work puts us in relationship with people. So these are the people that we serve. By consecration, we are called not only to serve, but also to offer our lives to others. So we give ourselves fully just in the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, sharing a particular solidarity with the poor and those who work. Therefore, the consecrated person appropriates to himself neither a work nor its fruits, but shares everything. Everything that the capuchin have belongs also to the poor. Oh, very challenging. Finally, number four. Ah, there are two more. Work puts us in relationship with the whole of creation. Okay. Therefore, the consecrated person, by means of his work, shall collaborate in the protection of creation with respect, recognizing it in the footprints of the Creator God. St. Francis sees God in whole of creation. He sees images of the Lord in the whole of creation. So he walks through the land with reverence, gently. He walks tenderly through the land, and this is the challenge for us too. Now finally, the last one is work puts us in relation with the Lord with God. Okay. The consecrated person is called to work in the vineyard of the Lord. Therefore, it is of vital importance that he grow day by day in an intimate relationship with him who is master of the vineyard. So always remember, you know, JPIC is nine, 80 to 90% prayer and contemplation and only 10 to 20% work. We find strength in our prayer so that we can continue our work in proclaiming the kingdom of the Father. Well, that's it for now. I hope that uh, this sharing, although a little bit long, has been fruitful and hopefully it might have touched some, some strings in your heart and might inspire you to continue to animate other people to work in JPIC and at the same time to inspire you to continue doing your work in the peripheries. Well, until the next video, thank you very much and have a great day.